All right, my friends, this is the last section of Unit 14. It's Section 614. You skipped Sections um, 11, 12, and 13 because they are BC topics. You can see that there's three places here. This was sections, uh, this would have been section 611, 612, and 613, but you don't need to know them until next year if you take BC. So what techniques for anti-differentiation for integration have you learned in this unit? We learned a whole bunch of different things. We learned the power rule to find an antiderivative. We learned U substitution. That was a hard one. We learned uh, the trig rules, some trigonometry things. Remember we uh, simplified some of the functions into their trig identities to make it easier for us to integrate. We had to keep in mind the inverse trig <coughs> rules. We had exponents and logarithms that we looked at. And we had long division. That was just on the last section. And the last thing we did in the last section was completing the square. They were all techniques and tricks that we use to be able to integrate functions. And so just as a reminder, as this last section goes, um, they have you looking at those different things and remembering the techniques that you use throughout the unit to be able to uh, find the integrals. So the whole idea of this particular section, it's, it's actually like a review. There's nothing new in it. There are no new concepts. It's just look at the problem and decide what method of the methods we just wrote down that you're going to use to be able to find the integral. And so that's the deal. So there are, I want to say, 22 questions. And it goes back to everything we've learned in the unit on integration. Pretty much, though, it looks at the last from 6.6 6 to 6.10 as its thing. So I just picked randomly a few questions to look at just to remind you. We're only going to do a few. It's going to be a short video. First one I picked was number two. And number two looks like this. What would you do with this to find the integral? Hopefully you're saying, well, I would distribute the 3x into this thing. This is like x to the 1 half power. So 3x times x to the 1 half power. Add the powers together. 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. This would be 3x to the 3 halves power. And then pretty simply, what's 3x times x squared? That would be a minus 3x cubed. And so that then gives me some individual pieces that I can just take the integral of each piece. Here it goes. I raise it to one more power. That's the 5 halves power. So I have the 3 that's out in front times x to the 5 halves power, I'm going to leave a space, x to the 5 halves, divided by 5 halves. Well, what happens with that divided by 5 halves? We've seen that that turns into a 2 fifths. It's like the reciprocal, multiplying by the reciprocal. And then the next piece would be, at take it to one more power, 3x to the 4th over 4. And then I'm going to have a plus c because I don't know, I don't have bounds on this guy. Can I make that prettier? Absolutely, pretty is good. 6 fifths x to the 5 halves minus 3 fourths x to the 4th plus c. That's my final answer. So sometimes distributing through that piece makes your answer or your integral a little easier to take. All right, next one I'm picking is number 10 because it looks kind of funky. Can I do that same, can I do that trick where I can uh, divide everybody through by x minus 2? And the answer is no. That only works when you have a single term denominator. If this were just an x, then you could divide it through. But because this is an x minus 2, you can't. So uh, we did use that trick at one point in time, but not for this kind of a thing with a binomial bottom. There is u substitution. I would pick, I don't know, it's definitely not going to fit together. You're not going to have an x minus 2. So u sub's not going to work. 
I'm going for, let's try division. This one's an easy synthetic division because it's just an x minus 2. So outside of my synthetic division box goes the 2, positive 2. x minus 2 equals 0 gives me x equals 2. I have a 4x squared. I have no x and I have no number, which is why I picked this one, because I figured you might get stuck. Drop the 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 0 plus 8 is 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 0 plus 16 is 16. And so I end up with my integral, my new integral, new and improved, is a, oh, here we go with Levi again. You guys are going to fall in love with him. I have a 4x, I have plus 8, plus my remainder of 16 over x minus 2. That's my new and improved integral. Take the antiderivative of each piece, Take figure out your integral. Uh, it's going to be 4x squared over 2, take it to one more power, plus 8x. And then remember this guy turns into a 16 ln of x minus 2 plus c. I don't need divide to divide anything this time because the coefficient on the x is a 1. But of course I am who I am and I want to make it the prettiest I can make it. And so here's my final best lovely answer. 2x squared plus 8x plus 16 ln of x minus 2 plus c. There's number 10. I thought if you looked at this, you'd get stuck and try to figure out what method or what um, how to approach that guy. So that's your story. You're just doing synthetic division on it. Here comes the last one. Last one for the unit. Woohoo! Number 20. Of course I picked you a trig guy. Now this one involves a chain rule because see my angle has a number with it. So if it involves chain rule then I'm going to use u substitution. What do you pick for your u? Whatever works to be easiest and in this case it's not very obvious. So I'm actually going to take and let my, I'm going to come over here, let my u equal the tangent of 2x. I know that's a little bit different than what we normally do, but du is going to equal the derivative of this. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of the same angle times the derivative of the angle. So it's going to be times 2. I'm going to put that in the front. And then I'm going to see how I can line it up. Well, I have a secant squared of 2x. Got that, right? I don't have this 2, so that 2's got to go to the other side. So it's going to be 1 half du equals secant squared 2x dx. This one has bounds, so that means I need to find my new bounds. And then I'm going to put the whole integral together. I'm going to fit the pieces together. But my bounds for this one are determined by the u equals tangent of 2 times my upper bound is pi over 8, or the tangent of pi over 4. My lower bound, tangent of 2 times 0 is tangent of 0. So I need to figure out what those numbers actually are. Tangent of pi over 4, well pi over 4 x is square root of 2 over 2, y is square root of 2 over 2. When I divide them, I get 1. Tangent of 0 is 0. Let's see if we can build our integral. Well, I know that, uh, I should use a different color. I know that this, tangent of 2x, is what my u is. So if I rewrite this, the first thing I have is a u times. And I know that my secant squared of 2x dx, this part here, is equivalent to this, 1 half du.
My bounds are now from 0 to 1. What can I do with that 1 half? I can bring it out. It turns into a really easy problem at this point. I end up with a u du inside 1 half. Add a power on, divide by the power. u squared over 2, going from 0 to 1. So I'm now going to f of b minus f of a. I'm going to plug a 1 in. I'm going to plug a 0 in, and I'm going to subtract them. Plug a 1 in. 1 squared is 1. 1 divided by 2. Minus. Put a 0 in. Well, that's just 0, so you can forget about that guy. 1 half times 1 half gives me 1 fourth. And that is your answer to number 20. Right, again, these are all reviewed. These, there's nothing new in this section. It's just a matter of putting all the pieces together. What method do I use? All right, I will see you in class, and uh, shoot me an email if you have questions. Thanks for all your hard work.